Welcome to the Susan Brender Show. It's all about you. Featuring shows on health and wellness, the performing arts, politics, and people who inspire you to be your very best. And now, here's Susan Brender. I'm Susan Brender, and today I've got a guest on my show, and I'm going to tell you something very interesting. This woman has gone through quite a bit, but she's inspired to uh, make people laugh, to love, to learn, to grow. What a wonderful guest I have today. And her name is, well, under her pen name, Cheryl Bannerman, her name is now Miss Powell. She's the author of two books and the owner of a 22-year-old training and developing company specializing in e-learning called Learn to Engage. I want to welcome to my show, Cheryl Powell. Hi. So, Cheryl, you know, my entry to um, your information made me realize that Uh when you go through so many things and you really face tragedies, it is Mm -hmm. so interesting that you're also able to have a good sense of humor. Why don't you tell our (laughs) audience about that? Yes, I think that if we don't, we would cry a lot. (laughs) So we laugh to keep from crying. Um, You know, life is full of ups and downs. And, um, you know, even in the Bible, it says that, you know, we will go through storms. And uh, it's important that if you don't have faith, you know, or you uh, have another type of belief or something that gives you strength, um, you know, that you hold on to that, you know, during the, the ups and downs of life. Yeah. And I've just, you know, I guess, and I've just learned um, to take all that and take all the the stories I hear and funny stories, sad stories, tragedies, things that um, I've gone through, uh, family members have gone through, my child um, has gone through, and I really just create these characters that are invincible, <laughs> basically, yeah. and um, I show through my books, you know, that these characters um, cannot be broken, yeah. and that, and that's the bottom line. Cheryl, you do you have your book in front of you? I don't have it in front of me, but go ahead. Okay, what I, I want you it. to do <laughs> is I want you to give me a quote from your book. Oh, sure, yeah, no problem. And you're talking about the second one, correct? Correct. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Okay. So much to choose from. Yeah. Well, I, I, I think that you... You caught me off guard. I, don't worry about that. <laughs> it's very good to have you tell about yourself, and this is the best way, so that's why I'm asking. <laughs> okay, so um, the uh, inspiration that started the book was really the char- the main character and her daughter, um, uh before she met Mr. Wonderful. <laughs> so, so it was her and her daughter and uh, her faith. So that's, that's what I'm going to read. It's, it's I am empowered. Uh, I am empowered. I am his daughter. He has my back. I am empowered. My child is his grandchild. He has our back. I am empowered. Oh, how we prosper for nothing we lack. We are empowered. We be writing them checks with lots of zeros. We are his children. We are the ones you mock. We are the ones you hate. We are successful. Checks in the mail. Everyone knows our name. We are his children, unique in our own way, never the same. Mm, That's wonderful. You know, how did you start getting um, your writing together? Um, you've written yeah. now how many books? Are we talking about two books? Two. I'm, um, the third one's with the editor now, yep. Yeah. So how did you get started? You know, I've always written. Um, I From a little girl, I used to write poetry. My first poem was published, um, I want to say 10 or 11 mm. was the first uh, poem that I published. So... Um, yeah, I wrote in school, <laughs> the newspaper, the literary magazine, the journals, um, just short stories, poems, and I just 
journaled. My mom encouraged me all the time to journal. And um, when it came time to write my first book, that was what I had actually was a bunch of stories and journal entries. Some were even on floppy disk. I lied to you. (laughs) I have been collecting them for so long. (laughs) So some were hard copy, you know, lined pieces of paper. Some were on the floppy disk, and that's how I put together, you know, the first book, Black Child to Black Woman. Mm -hmm. Well, you know something, Um, it's it's not unusual for people to write poetry, but when you're very young, how did, who inspired you to do that? It must have been someone. You just didn't start on your own and say, I want to write poetry, did you? No, it was my mom. I mean, she, my mom always um, flooded me with books. She always read to me. Um, I remember my my first book being Little Women. Um, so, I mean, she really, I was an avid reader. Um, from a very young age, and she flooded me with a lot of um, literature, you know, really classic novels. Yeah. And uh, I had um, a lot of stuff in my childhood that uh, we weren't allowed to talk about. Yeah, you know, I don't know if anybody else can relate to that, but you just weren't supposed to talk about it. You know, your your brothers are on drugs, but you're not supposed to talk about it. Right. You know, um, it was just a lot of stuff <laughs> in the family. Yeah, like that. Well, and you internalize all of that when you're little. Yeah, yeah. And and, so, and I journaled it. <laughs> you journaled it no less. Uh, I'm I'm interested in this because today our kids what do they do? They go on the computer. Yeah. They're on their phones. And yes. we, you know, where's the feeling of the book? Where is the right. wonder of the story? Uh, yes. Can you find it on the computer? I don't think so. Yeah. <laughs> I tried the Kindle, didn't work for me. <laughs> I need to feel pages turning. Mm. I I need to smell the book. I need to. <laughs> there's nothing like the smell of a new book, Absolutely. and just feeling that the pages turn under your fingers. I don't know any other feeling. I don't. I don't understand the technology part of. Of of reading. So what kind um, of effect do you think it's going to have on our society? Because, I mean, you're a writer. You're a person who's yeah. gone through a lot, and you recognize how wonderful it is to have that hard book in your hand or the soft book yeah. in your hand. And now, as we talked about a moment ago, it's not – it's going away. It's just going away. So you you got to have some thoughts about this. Yeah, uh, my thoughts are that um, we're already seeing it in the way that our children don't know how to communicate um, or express their feelings. Um, everything is texting someone or sending an email. Um, I, I feel like we are losing our ability to connect with other human beings yeah. um, because emotions um, are are in writing. Yeah. There's there's emotions, and that's that's what that's where I learned. To, that it was okay to feel. Yeah. It's okay to experience whatever you want in a book. You can be whoever you want and experience whatever you want. You're never going to be hurt. Even if the character dies, you're still alive. Yeah. <laughs> so, right. so you can experience whatever you want. And um, I, somewhere along the way, I kind of feel like technology kind of took the feelings away mm. and the emotions, and that's why um, our children – um, in this generation, don't know how to um, express their feelings um, verbally. Yeah, yeah. That's now, just my opinion. I hear you. And, um, you know, you write a fiction, of course, and yes. a lot of your fiction is uh, a topic of social concern, such as yeah. addictions to domestic violence, to suicide, yeah. to molestations. Why? Why, why did you put that? Those are scary things, and they're horrible. They are. <laughs> they are scary. And and I want the characters to know that me, my friends, my child, uh, my family, we have gone through all of these things. And you know what? Through our faith, we're untouchable. We're still standing. Yeah. We're still running our companies. We're still running our families. We didn't let it destroy us. Right. And 
and I want people to feel, okay, what that character is going through and relate to that character. And in this second book, I even gave journal entry lines at the end of each chapter with questions so that you can, so that any reader can start to dissect what's really going on, right, in our heads and maybe even encourage them to seek counseling yeah. if need be, yeah. you know. You but know, these are big things. Oh, they yeah. Are. <laughs> and a lot of taboos are, are actually, um, they're connected to seeing yeah. somebody to get help. A lot of people, yes. if I go to a psychologist, I go to a psychiatrist, oh, my yes. God, I'm sick, I'm bad, yes. uh, I can't tell anybody it's about so it. It's so sad. Yeah, isn't <laughs> that? So I think that it would be interesting for you to tell the, our audience, tell them about how they can really feel secure and comfortable and get it all out. How do, You know, I mean... Don't you uh, don't you agree that it's really important to see somebody to kind of have a discussion with them? If you don't have an objective source to speak to, I would encourage it. Um, I found in my personal um, experiences in life that family and friends, it's impossible for them to be objective. There's so much judgment. There's so much judgment. People that just don't understand what you're talking about if they haven't experienced it. Right. And unless you've walked a mile in my shoes, right, mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you'll never understand what I'm feeling. And so finding a therapist is not just about getting help, but it's also about with somebody who has knows nothing about you. They're completely objective. Mm -hmm. And they can listen and then repeat back and ask questions and get you to think about things in a different light. Yeah. You know, for the longest time, um, some of my childhood uh, uh, stories are inside of Black Child to Black Woman. And some of the things I remember... Uh, my father was an alcoholic, like the character in the book. And I remember when I was about 26, mm -hmm. I realized that I kept dating people that were alcoholic yeah. and trying to save them. <laughs> and, I, and I didn't realize, it took me many years, you know, to realize it. And I said, oh, my goodness. I said, there's a pattern here. And my brothers, you know, were addicted to drugs. Yeah. And so everybody that I was dating, I was trying to save. Uh -huh. And and when you finally realize something like that, you it's almost freeing. Yeah. You're like, oh, my goodness, I see what I'm doing. Okay, now I can fix it and move on. Mm -hmm. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it really is. Now, so how do you keep the messages in your book so positive in a world full of so much negativity? I mean, you know what's going on in the world, and it's not a yes. good thing. So how do you do yes. that? Well, I, I tell you, um, most of it is really through my faith. Um, you know, in God, I just really try to um, interject as much of that in the book as possible um, to not only keep it positive, but also to give the reader hope. Mm -hmm. So if, if the reader doesn't have any hope, then it's obviously the book's going to make them feel bad, you know. So, so I interject that to um, give them hope throughout the book, and then in the end, there's always a positive ending. Oh, that's great. So the, the character always pulls through. Yeah, but Cheryl, um, there is a lot of terrible things going on and yeah. people judge like crazy you know there are mm -hmm. a lot of people who are xenophobic now mm -hmm. uh with this islamic situation that's going on yes. now you know i think it's something that you can't help but really being negative and you're saying you can make because of your faith now yeah. 
faith. Let's talk a little bit about faith because mm-hmm. faith is a very interesting word and it's a very interesting concept. I want yes. to know what you talk about or what you think about the word faith. Well, in my particular instance, faith is my Christ- belief in, in Christianity um, and my faith in God, knowing that I always have him to turn to, I can pray and get strength, um, I can go to church and have fellowship, um, all that stuff gives you strength. Um, there might be something else that you have in your life that's your faith, right? Mm-hmm. So it it might not be religion. Um, so that's why I say faith in my terms. I but you can pull whatever you want from the word faith mm-hmm. and strength right. um, throughout the books. Now, so the- you can you can make it relate to whatever you want. But for me. That's my strength that has kept me from going off the deep end. <laughs> at times. What about spirituality? <laughs> is there a connection between faith and spirituality? And and if it, if it is, okay. So I want to know what puts the two together, and is it important to be spiritual? Oh gosh, that I means for me, it's a it's a thousand percent connection. Um, you know, I don't feel, even when I'm physically alone, I don't feel um, alone when I'm in his presence. Um, and, and that's huge for me. Right. So for me, it's, it's one in the same. Um, I consider spirituality also about the type of person that you are inside. Um, you know, there's, like you said, there's so many things. <laughs> In this world, if you just watch the news um, that are happening, you know, every day, and it's sad. And I wonder what the inside looks like. Why are we so hateful and angry? Yeah. Um, You know, where does that come from? Uh, Maybe these people that are hurting other people, maybe they were abused as a child. And that's why they hurt others. Right. Um, the family, the family structure and the brokenness of our families has a lot to do with, you know, what's going on in the world today. I so, are you a good person inside? Do you do you pay it forward? Do you do for others? Right? Isn't that what what goodness inside is all about? I I think so. I mean, there's no question about it. But but you see that while people understand, and they, they, you know what you're saying, people understand. Yeah. But somehow they've they've lost it. Um, yeah. We live in a society that money is one of the most important things in power. I mean, look at our government. Mm-hmm. Look at the things that is saying about our president and all of the people in the Congress and and in the Senate. You know, we need leadership. And leadership, who would you like to be our leader? Just, uh, I'm curious, is there any person uh, that you would like to tell all these things um, to the people? Is there anybody? Well, for me, again, I go back to my faith. Physically, in this physical world, it doesn't matter um, because the spiritual leader, God, is always in control, and that's who we turn to. Um, So it doesn't matter physically, you know, on this earth what's what's really going on. And you have to really look to, um, again, I look to my faith for direction. Right. Okay, because you're not going to find it, even in, in some preachers that are out there that are not 100% followers of God. You know, you can't you have to be careful what you listen to, even from them. True. So. Yeah, you never know who you're dealing with, of course. <laughs> no question. Now. Because like you said, money. Money. <laughs> rules everything. Th- that's right. You know, there was a program, um, there's a wonderful program on NPR. It's called, um, Mm -hmm. oh, I'm about to tell you and I can't think of it. But anyway, there's a great program on NPR. And there was a star on that program. And when uh, 
he was asked, what drives you? Mm -hmm. You know, why do you do the things you do? Because he's wild. He's a wild guy. That's what he said. It's money. Money. Wow. Now, I I want (laughs) to move along because you have a a company that's 22 years old. It's training Mm -hmm. and development. Now, tell Mm -hmm. us a little bit about that. Sure. It's, um, it's again, writing. Um, and <laughs> I guess this is just what I was born to do, although I have many other talents, um, including singing like yourself. I, <laughs> I actually, I actually um, write for my personal and professional life. Um, I've always written uh, training curriculums and courses. Um, now I write scripts for e-learning. I develop e-learning modules. Um, it, it's just something about putting myself into a character role and and teaching something. It's I don't know what it is. I just love to write, and I guess it's the fascination and love of books that my mother started me with at such a young age. I, I, but that's that's what I've done. I started out as a teacher standing up in the classroom, right. and then I, I realized, um, you know, that I like to actually write the course um, more than I, I like to teach it. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, I want to tell you a little amazing. story. Um, you know, Cheryl, this is a, yeah. this is a story that I, I can't stop thinking about. Uh, mm-hmm. Many years ago, I had an uncle. He was a scholar. And mm-hmm. um, he used to say to me, if you want to learn – Uh put the newspaper in front of you. In this case, Uh it was the New York Times. And he said, read every little bit of it and make notes on the side, Uh and you will learn how to write. That will be how to write. Oh, wow. That's what he said, and I think he he was right. Um, Uh But you get all the, you get all new words, you get, different kinds yes. of talk. You know, think about it. It, it seems to, to be <laughs> realistic, right? <laughs> I, I, love I, I never thought of it that way, but it's it's definitely, um, I have to say, with speaking with other authors, everybody has their own way or method of writing a book. Yeah. And it, I find it amazing. Um when I speak with other people, they do elaborate notes, um, whiteboards, index cards. Hmm. Um, you know, me, I, I don't, they don't understand how I do it. I just sit at the computer and type. Sometimes I use um, Dragonly speaking and just say it and let it, you know, type. Um, my editor hates that, but it's because <laughs> doesn't format very well but it works but i just type i don't yeah i don't do any i don't do notes or anything i just i just it just comes out yeah yeah well (laughs) crazy yeah it's it's wild and wonderful actually now (laughs) today my guest has been cheryl powell she's the author of and the owner of a wonderful company which is a company that trains and develops uh, e-learning, and it's called Learn to Engage. Now, I always like my guests to have the last word. So, Cheryl, what would you like to tell the audience and give them information about your books? Oh, absolutely. Well, let's see. There's a lot to choose from. If you go to bannermanbooks.com, um, that's where you can find all the information on Words Never Spoken, the latest book, and uh, the the book market page will give you links to purchasing uh, Black Child to Black Woman. And if you um, go to Author House for Black Child to Black Woman, the first book, there's actually an audio book now um, for that, which is wonderful for long car rides. (laughs) Oh, It's so entertaining. She's the the woman that did the voice. um, the, well, the book is written in journal style, so it starts as a little kid and, and then a teenager and then a woman's voice. And so she did all the voices. Um, she does character roles. She's wonderful. And um, it, it's just really entertaining. So that's where you find information about me as the author. And then if you go to learn the number two, engage.info, 
um, that's where you'll find everything you need to know about the training and development business. And you can order, it's a self-service site. Mm -hmm. So you can order any instructional design um, products or e-learning modules that you need. Sounds great. Well, I'm going to repeat again that I had a great guest today, and her name was Cheryl Powell, and she's the author of a few books and a fabulous company. And if you want to really have a lot of knowledge, she's the one to go to. So thank you again, Cheryl Powell. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure being here. Thank you for listening to The Susan Brender Show. To be a guest, email sebrender at yahoo.com.